Okay, we're done with the ray diagrams for lenses. Now let's look at the applications of converging lenses. Earlier, you saw in the table that your converging lenses can be used in various field instruments like your magnifying glass, LCD projector, camera, as well as visual correction for long sightedness. So we're going to look at each of these applications one by one. Okay. The first application of your converging lenses used in magnifying glass. This is uh, achieved when the object is placed such that the object distance u is less than the focal length f of the lens. Then you see that the image is magnified. That means it is bigger than the object itself. But you have a virtual image and this image is upright. So you can see uh, very clearly what your object looks like. Next example, we look at the LCD projector which consists of a concave mirror here. A halogen lamp is a light source. A pair of condenser lamps, I think these two are not visible in your slide, you may want to draw it in. And then you have your projection lens, which is the same converging lens that we are using. Okay, so with this LCD projector, your object is placed between F and 2F, one focal length and two focal length. Okay, so this is the object that we place such that your image form is magnified real and inverted so we want the image to be upright then we put the object inverted in fact okay so you have a real image that can be captured on the screen it is inverted so from upside down now it becomes upright and it is magnified much bigger that's how you can uh, have your projector screen to project your movies in your home theater or in the cinemas. Or you have your projector in the classroom projecting whatever that is on the teacher screen to a bigger image on the projector screen so that everyone in the class can have a clear view of uh, what it is. Next example for camera lens. Not sure how many of you have seen the older type of cameras where you have your photographic film. Okay, so when uh, this kind of camera is used, what you do is when you press on the shutter button, like when you're taking a photo now, the shutter will open, light will enter from outside, passing through your converging lens here, and then the image will be formed on the film. Okay, and after you take one photo, you will need to uh, turn and click so that the film moves on around the spool to the next film for you to capture the next image. Okay, so for the camera lens, the image is diminished. Let's say you're looking at a very tall tree there, but if you capture it, it's only a small image that fits that small uh, square in the photographic film. Okay, it is real because it can be captured on your screen, which is the film in this case, and it is inverted. Okay. Last application of converging lenses, we are going to look at the visual correction for long sightedness, which is what we call long yin in Chinese. Okay. So people with uh, long sightedness, they can see star objects clearly but not those are near objects or close objects. Okay, so people with long sightedness, they are unable to focus a clear image of near objects on the retina. Look at this diagram here. You see the light from a close object, a near object to the eyes. After refracting through the lens in our eye, the image converges behind the retina. So the eye is not able to focus the light rays on the retina so you cannot see a clear image here. So for the person with long sightedness to read or to see an object near to them, they will need uh, special spectacles which we call the Lai Hua Yan Xing. Okay? So these spectacles that help to correct the vision actually comes with converging lenses. 
to help to partially converge the light rays and help to form a sharp image on the retina. Okay, so you have your light from the object which is close to the eye. When the light ray passes through the spectral lens, okay, this converging lens helps the eye lens okay, to converge the beam of light onto the retina. Okay, so your converging lens helps a long sighted eye to focus a clear image on the retina. That allows the person with long sightedness to be able to see the image of these close objects clearly. Okay, with those four examples of the applications of converging lenses done, we have come to the end of this section on ray diagrams for lenses. Let's just summarize the key ideas so far. Number one, ray diagrams can be constructed to locate the position of the image formed by a thin converging lens. It also allows us to identify the type of image so you can have real or virtual, upright or inverted, as well as the size of the object of the image, whether it's the same size as object, magnified or diminished. Point number two, when you construct the ray diagram, you use path one and path two to trace the path of light that is incident on the thin converging lens. Okay, so for path one, it will pass through the optical center without any refraction of ending. And path two, your incident rays parallel to the principal axis, they will pass through your principal focus or focal point, capital F there. Three and four are the summary from the table. There are six examples there. Okay, so three, a real and inverted image is formed when the object distance U is greater than focal length F. This is for the first four examples where your U is equal to infinity, greater than 2F, equals to 2F or between F and 2F. So the image is formed on the other side of the lens for these four examples. Okay, whereas for object distance U less than or equal, equal is missing here, the focal length F, you find that you have a virtual and upright image and your image form is on the same side of the lens as the object as seen in your last two examples in the table. Okay, then remember to complete the two questions on test itself 12.5, question 1 on page 33 and question 2 on page 34. Okay, then also give me your comments, your feedback or your questions in the next section as well. Okay. So um, maybe you can tell me whether you could understand the tutorial 1 and 2 questions given for refraction uh, last Friday's lesson, whether uh, you need me to go through any of the questions on uh, those two tutorials next week's lesson. If not, then I will use the next week's lesson to move on to the next topic. Okay. Then uh, just some feedback about the work that was handed in. Many of you, uh, or some of you, actually forgot or missed out your arrows for your light rays. So make sure you remember to add in arrows to indicate the direction of the light travel. Okay, so including uh, these upcoming tutorials that you need to do uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, then same thing, I will be uploading the answers of Friday for you to check and then you submit your work. Okay, so at that time, let me know if uh, I need to spend time to go through any of the questions, whether we need drawing and diagram and so on again. Otherwise, we will move on to electricity. Okay, so remember to give your comments or feedback, including whether you want to see my face like this time or you prefer, you know, just a voice without the face to distract you. Okay, so uh, see you next week.